Hello, my name is Chris and today I'd like to share with you some good news about quitting smoking. I'd like to share with you some of the joys and some of the good things that await for you on the other side of your quit. I know that when you are in the early days, in the early weeks, even in the early months, sometimes quitting smoking can feel like this never-ending battle. Every day there's a new withdrawal symptom, there's a new trigger, there's a new craving, there's a new, oh my goodness, is this ever going to, to get better? Am I ever going to be happy? Am I ever going to be free? Yes. Yes, you are. There is so much good stuff to look forward to on the other side of your quit that we just don't talk about often enough. I've made many videos in the past looking at all the different struggles and challenges that, that we, we face as we quit smoking and I keep reassuring you, look, just get through this and everything will get better. But we don't spend enough time talking about how it's going to get better. And there are lots of, of obvious things, oh, I say obvious things that, that everybody talks about, you know, that, that we have, that we can benefit from when we quit smoking. Like we all know that when we quit, we'll have more money in our pockets and less poison in our lungs. We know that the further away we get from our last cigarette, the more we reduce the risk of, of heart disease and lung cancer and all that other horrible stuff. But that's often not enough to motivate some of us. I'm reminded of when I used to go to, to certain 12 step meetings and there'd be really angry old timers then to be going, if you drink, you will die, right? Which is true, but what they never said was, but if you get sober, you will live like you have never lived before. And I think that the same very much applies to quitting smoking. Quite often, all of the, the literature and the promotional campaigns and stuff, it's all focused on if you continue to smoke, you will die and all these horrible things will happen to you. Yes, I can't dispute that. But let's focus more on, look, if you quit, lots of amazing things will happen. I'll share those things with you in just a moment. But before I do, I just want to very quickly say thank you to those of you who showed up to my first live stream, was it like a week ago now? I gave you like 25 minutes notice and more of you turned up than I expected and I, and I had a, a great time talking with you all. I know some people were kind of sad that they, that they missed it, but again, I didn't give you much notice, so that's my fault. But I'm giving you plenty of notice for the next one. I'm going to do another live stream on Wednesday the 15th of May at 8 p.m. UK time. I will figure out what time that is in other countries and, and post it down below. So you've got plenty of notice for that. Plus, it's the day before my birthday, so bring cake. <laughs> Whew. Okay, let's get into some of the good things that await you on the other side of your quit. The first piece of good news that I can give you about quitting smoking is that eventually your relationship with cigarettes will end completely. There will come a time when cigarettes are not only not a part of your life, they're not a part, a part, a part, they're not a part of your thought process. There comes a time even after we smoke our last cigarette, we are very conscious of the fact that we are not smoking. We are very conscious of the fact that we don't have cigarettes, that we're not smoking. We go around and sometimes we give ourselves a pat on the back for not smoking. Sometimes we, we clench our, our, our fists together and go, ah, I'm not smoking. 
we see people out on the street and they're smoking and, and we're constantly reminded of the fact that, that we used to smoke but are in the process of quitting. As I shared in the video I made called When Does Not Smoking Become Normal? There is a, a gradual transition period where we think about cigarettes less, where we think about smoking less and and there's, there's really a kind of flashing light bulb moment for it. There just comes a point where where we are com so completely free that it just it doesn't enter our thoughts to, to even think about it. I think about cigarettes, I'd imagine, more than anybody else who, who is like two and a half years smoke free. And that, but that's because I come here and I do this every week. But even now, my, my relationship to cigarettes is completely different. I don't think about maybe I should have one. I don't, you know, when I go out on the street, I don't think, oh, I'm not smoking. My sort of thought process now is more like, what can I take from my experiences that I can share with you and hopefully help you? One of the things that I can share with you is the absolute joy of being able to breathe in lungs full of deep, fresh air. There used to be a time somebody would say to me, okay, take a deep breath, and I'd go. And that was the best I could do because it was like my lungs were so full of gunk and poison and tar that I couldn't get enough oxygen into them. One of the, the, the things that caused me to, you know, to say, do you know what, I love being smoke free so much that I'm going to go on YouTube and try and, you know, support other people to enjoy what I have, was I was outside and I just stopped and took a deep breath and for the first time, probably since I was a teenager, I felt all this fresh air go all the way down to the bottom of my lungs and I just... took a big, deep, satisfying breath. It was one breath, but it felt so good. And it continues to feel so good. When I can breathe properly, I can relax better. When I get stressed or tense or angry, I can do breathing exercises better so that I feel calm. I can breathe in all the good stuff. Breathe out all that tension and stress and anger. When I have fresh air coming into my lungs, when I have more oxygen in my system, I feel more awake, I feel more alert, I feel more alive, which is why quite often in my videos I will encourage you, go outside, even if only for 10 minutes, and get some proper fresh air, get some proper oxygen into your lungs, because it makes you feel really really good. It makes you feel calm, relaxed and peaceful. I'm not saying that you are going to go around on a pink cloud for the rest of your life being completely zen all the time. But just getting a few breaths of fresh air every now and again is going to do you the world of good. And trust me, when you quit and you get that, that feeling of, of all the fresh air in your lungs, it will be a feeling like you never had when you were quitting smoking and your lungs were so full of gunk that you just couldn't get the fresh air in. But of course, you don't have to go outside anymore if it is cold, if it is raining, if it is just horrible, horrible weather, which so many of us would do when we smoked. We would have our desire, our, our craving, our compulsion to have that one cigarette would override any common sense, any logic that would say to us, okay, well, do you know what? It is throwing down with rain outside. Normal human beings would not go out. We'd be like, do you know what? I'm getting an umbrella. I'm getting a hood. I'm getting a little tiny umbrella for my cigarette so that it doesn't get damp. And, and that thought has just really made me laugh. And I'm going to go and smoke this cigarette in the rain. I'm going to stand there and I'm not going to be able to get my lighter going because because it'll be wet, but I will stand there and I will stay there until I do it. And I, I don't care how miserable it makes me, I need 
my fix. The good news about quitting smoking is that we don't have to do that anymore. I remember just after Christmas, I was looking after my parents' dog and I took the dog for a walk early on this morning, or not this morning, sorry, early on one morning when I was there and it was about 6.30, 7 a.m. in the morning and it was, like I say, it was just after Christmas so it was dark, it was cold, it was wet, it was just a horrible morning. I didn't really want to be outside at all but, you know, I had to take the dog with me. And I remember I walked past this house and there was a woman and she was sat at her, in her garage with the garage roof open, smoking a cigarette. She had her, her pajamas on and her dressing gown and she was sat there like kind of like uh, shivering cold and smoking a cigarette. And, when, and she'd made a conscious decision to do that. She had this beautiful warm, I say, I assume it was beautiful, beautiful warm home that she could have chosen to be in but the compulsion and the need for nicotine was so strong that she chose to go outside on this cold horrible morning and smoke. And one of the best things about not having to, to you know, now that we've quit smoking we don't have to do that anymore. We can make better decisions, we can stay inside where it's warm and then when the weather comes next we can go outside and breathe in all that fresh air, get some exercise, feel more energised, more alert and more awake. Of course one of the best things about not having to go outside in the rain and not having to go out in all conditions just to get our fix is how much time we save. One of the very first videos I did on YouTube was um, five things that nobody tells you will happen when you quit smoking. And in that I mentioned then about how much time we save, not just through smoking itself, but through all the other stuff like we have to go to the shop and buy cigarettes, then there's always that thing where we lose a lighter and it's hidden in some random place that we would never have thought of. All that time taken up by smoking that we could be spending doing so many more interesting, healthy and productive things. But I actually sat down and did the maths on it. Or if you're American, I did the math on it. <laughs> and it worked out just through, say, all those times when we have to go outside and smoke. And smoking is our main activity. If we smoke 20 cigarettes a day and each cigarette takes us five minutes to smoke, then that is a hundred minutes every day. I'm looking at my phone because I wrote these numbers down because I would never remember them. It is a hundred minutes a day or 700 minutes a week, which is 11 hours and 40 minutes every single week that we are not smoking. Multiplied by the 52 weeks out of the year and that is Oh my goodness, 36,400 minutes or 606 hours and 40 minutes of doing nothing but smoking. Now the average month has 720 to 740 hours in it. So that means that for every full year that we smoke cigarettes, we are spending the better part of a month doing nothing but being outside smoking. Now I'm willing to admit that I might not have those figures spot on, although I'm pretty confident that I do. But somebody, I might have done a wrong sum, but I'm pretty confident that those figures are accurate. 606 hours and 40 minutes smoking 20 cigarettes a day for five minutes at a time. Think of what else you could be doing with all that time. Starting a new hobby, reading that book you finally wanted to, want, to, to read. So much more better and productive and interesting things that you could be doing rather, rather than smoking. Now, I'm not the greatest at maths, so I found adding up all those sums pretty complicated. But nowhere near as complicated as my life itself was when I smoked. 
Towards the end, I was a heavy 40 a day smoker. And to fit all of those cigarettes just into my day-to-day -day life was a never-ending nightmare of complications. It was always like, well, okay, what do I have to do today? And I have to go to this place at this time with these people to do this thing. So I had to start factoring in, when can I smoke? I would have to do the whole thing of, well, it's 9.55 p.m., and the store shuts in five minutes. Do I have enough cigarettes to last me until morning? Or do I have to now go and do the mad dash to go and get smokes? And then they'll last me. There were so many complications that I had to think about when I was busy smoking. I was reminded recently of the, the most, not necessarily extreme, but one of the most I can't even think of the word, a situation where it just occurred to me how much smoking controlled my life, which was in the airport. I go through security and then rather than just being able to relax and enjoy the experience of being at the airport and going somewhere fun on an adventure, I would be, okay, now I've got to go all the way around the airport on this side of security and find somewhere to smoke. And normally it was in a little tiny room with like 50 other smokers and you would stink and cough and it was just a horrible, horrible experience. I remember one time I was in, I think it was in Chicago airport, but it could have been somewhere else. I know it was definitely in the United States somewhere, where... They didn't have anywhere that you could smoke once you cleared security. So I went all the way round the airport looking for somewhere to smoke and couldn't. And smoking controlled my life to the point that I thought, you know what, screw it. I'm going to leave the airport, smoke a cigarette and then go all the way back through security again. What a nightmare. These days when I go somewhere, I go through security, I go and sit down and just relax and enjoy the experience. These days cigarettes do not control my life and they don't throw up half as many complications <laughs> as they used to. In fact, no complications, I don't know why I said half as many. They don't throw up any complications in the way that they used to. Life just becomes easier to deal with. When it gets late at night, my first thought isn't how long do the shop shut and do I have enough cigarettes to last me until morning? My first thought when I wake up in the morning isn't, okay, what have I got to do today and how can I fit smoking into today? If I'm going somewhere with a friend and they don't smoke, then I've got to, fact, to, to add an extra complicated step to my journey to figure out how I can get away from them and go and smoke. And I don't have to do that anymore. Life is so, so much easier. And here's one more final joyful thing about quitting smoking is that the whole process of quitting itself makes you stronger. Many people say, and I'm one of them, that quitting smoking is the hardest thing they have ever had to do. Now, first of all, I want to remind you that prior to quitting smoking, something else was the hardest thing that you had to do, and you did it. So you already have a 100% success rate of doing the hardest thing that you have to do, which means that you can quit smoking as well. Then once you've quit smoking, somewhere down the line, I know I'm talking about lots of wonderful, interesting and exciting things happen to you once you quit smoking, but somewhere down the line, life being life, there will be another challenging situation that occurs. And that will be the hardest thing you've ever had to do in your life. And you'll be able to say, well, do you know what? At one point, quitting smoking was, and I got through it. So if I got through that, I can get through this. The process of quitting smoking made me stronger, it made me more resourceful, it made me more grateful for having this beautiful smoke-free life that I have today. And because of all that, I can do absolutely 
anything. Those are just a few of the ways that my life changed for the better once I quit smoking. And I'd like to reassure you, however difficult it feels like, feels right now, once you quit, life will change for the better too. Wherever you are on your journey, please do let me know in the comments below. If you have successfully quit and you are enjoying smoke-free living, why not let me know and let other people know what are the happiest and the best parts of being smoke-free. I would certainly love to hear from you. Again, that reminder, we'll do the next live chat on Wednesday the 15th of May at 8 p.m. UK time. For more videos like this on a weekly basis, please do consider subscribing. And of course, if you would like more support on your quit smoking journey, please do come and join us in the Finding Freedom Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Finding Freedom 1. I hope you have found this video helpful or at least a, a, so comforting in some way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I uh, know, uh, settle down, settle down. <laughs> All right, okay, camera. I uh, know, I uh, know. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> settle down. Well, okay, okay.